Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Phil. Welcome to Phil's Computer Lab. Previously, we had a look at some slot one CPUs. And for today, I actually had something different planned, but I had some eBay dramas and after waiting five weeks, I got a refund and these CPUs will arrive from the US at a later stage. So today we're looking at the Pentium 2 333. And also in the meantime, got a new CPU cooler as well. So we're gonna have a look at what does the CPU have to offer? What does it cost back in the day? And how much does it cost now? How does it perform in DOS and Windows benchmarks? How does it handle games? And should you consider the CPU for your retro gaming PC project? In the background, we've got Death Cars, and to break it up a little bit, we've got gameplay throughout the video featuring Blood 2, Screamer Rally, Half-Life, Starcraft, Shadow Man, and Falcon 4.0. Let's have a look at some benchmarks. We're starting with DOS and 320 by 200 resolution in 3D Bench 1.0C. We're getting 501 FPS. In Chris's 3D Bench 336, in the PC Player benchmark, we're getting over 100 FPS for the first time. And in Doom, we're getting 109 FPS, which is also very fast. In Quake, 84 FPS. Let's have a look at the higher resolution results. PC Player Benchmark at 640 by 480, 40 FPS. In Quake, we're getting 32 FPS. And in Duke Nukem 3D, 54 FPS. Let's have a look at Windows Benchmarks in 3D Mark 2000, 2537. In Incoming, 65. In Expendable, we're getting 33 FPS. In GL Quake, 135. In Quake 2, we're getting 91. And in Quake 3, we're getting 34 FPS. In MDK 2, 46. The Pentium 2333 was launched in January of 1998. It has a clock speed of 333 MHz and is probably the last 66 MHz FSB CPU from Intel. At least it's the final 66 MHz FSB CPU from the Pentium 2 range. It's got a 5x multiplier and my version was locked, I believe. All these CPUs are locked. However, there are some rumors that some of the early chips are still unlocked. However, I couldn't confirm that. It's got 512 kilobytes of cache running at half the clock speed, 166 megahertz. Just like all the other slot one CPUs, it comes in the single edge contact cartridge which is compatible with the slot one form factor. Now slot one is known to be very reliable and a very stable platform, mostly because of the famous Intel 440px chipset, but you can also use the older 440LX chipset, which is limited to the 66 megahertz FSB. The Pentium 2 333 also supports the memory type range register, so you can use tools such as FastVit to get a DOS graphics boost and I've done a video tutorial on that link down below in the description. Go go go. Let's move. Commander. Standing by. Sends the field training exercise. The Pentium 2333 is the first Pentium 2 with the new Deschutes core. Produced at a smaller 250 nanometer process, running at a low voltage of 2.0 volts, and consuming a lot less power, it's got a TDP of only 20.6 watts. Now, if we compare that to the 300 megahertz uh, Klamath processor that was produced at the 350 nanometer process, needed 2.8 volts and had a TDP of 43 watts. So we're looking at a delta of more than 20 watts difference. It will be interesting to see if we can measure that uh, power difference with my power measuring device uh, on the wall. Wow. 
In terms of prices, back in the day, this CPU launched at a whopping price of 722 US dollars. That's according to CPU World website. I had a look on eBay. In Australia, I found a CPU for 20 Australian dollars. In the US, I found one for only five US dollars. And in the UK, one for five pounds. So it looks like these are very easy and very affordable on eBay. So if you're looking for one of these, it shouldn't be very hard to find one. A couple of tips, however, do check that a cooler is included. Um, if you're buying one without a cooler and you don't have one, that's an extra expenditure on your part. quick look at the test system we're using in this video. It is the same as in the other videos, the ABIT BH6 slot one motherboard, 256 megabytes of RAM. We've got a Quadro 2 Pro video card, a Turtle Beach Santa Cruz sound card, a 16 gigabyte SD card for storage and an ID DVD ROM drive. Let's have a look at power draw. This is the entire system measured at the power supply. We're getting 55 watts instead of 70, so that is quite a bit lower. In gaming, we've got Quake 2 here running at 1600 by 1200, only 64 compared to 83 watts. So that is pretty much a delta of the 20 watts that the spec sheet talked about. And in expandable at 1024 by 768 with VSync enabled, we're seeing similar results. 60 watts power draw for the entire system compared to 78. 1,000, scattered, nearest bandit bearing, 360, one mile, picture is multiple groups, 1,000, scattered, nearest bandit bearing, 3 fighting, 3 fighting, 3 fighting. Let's go over the games that we checked out throughout this video. Falcon 4.0, we got a crash. I ran it a few times, it didn't change. StarCraft runs great, the scrolling is actually a little bit too fast, but I believe you can change that in the game options. Blood 2 and also Half-Life, those two games are playable, but clearly the machine struggles. Uh, we're getting quite low FPS, so this game, these games definitely need a faster CPU. Screamer Rally uh, in 16-bit colors, now this is one heck of a demanding DOS game not really playable at all. And then we have Shadow Man, that game was also very playable. So let's wrap it up. The highlight of this CPU is really the low power consumption or the performance per watt. It is heaps better than the previous Pentium 2 300 based on the Klamath Core. It is also easy to find and cheap on eBay and it is the top Pentium 2 if you have a motherboard that can only do 66 megahertz FSB for example like a Intel 440LX chipset. In terms of gaming performance, a ton of 1997 and earlier games will work just fine. All, pretty much all the DOS games at 320 by 200 will also work fine. However, because this CPU came out in the beginning of 1998, if you're playing games from 1998, especially later ones, you will find that the performance is actually not quite there. We could see that in Half-Life and also in Blood 2. And that's it guys, thank you so much for watching. As always on the screen a couple of video suggestions and that's it, I'll see you next week with another video.